What's up creators? So today we're going to continue our dive into the block pattern. So the diagram I have right here is what we did last in the last video. If you want to check it out, there'll be a little card in the top right somewhere over here. And then there's also a link in the description if you want to take a look at that first before coming here. Also, the code is going to be a continuation from the code from the last episode. So make sure to check that out if you haven't seen it. But so here is the basics of what we went over with block. So here's the here's your UI. And you have two buttons and a counter, right? So when you click a button, you send an event to the block. We're going to call our block block A. Whenever you send the event to the block, we're going to be sending a state to the block provider. The block provider, you have to define what block you have. In this case is block A. So that means it'll send the state to the block provider. And then the block provider provides the block and the state coming with the block to a block builder, which rebuilds the UI according to what state it was passed in. So today we're going to be continuing with this and we're going to be adding in a block listener. And then we're also going to go over the block consumer. So what is a block listener? So block listener goes somewhere over here. Block listener. So when the block provider, the block, when the block builder builds UI, that's its main task. So let's say you navigate to the screen. The block builder will execute and it will run, it will check what the current state is and build your UI accordingly. But every time a widget needs to be built, this will be run. That's why we need a block listener. So block listener will also be provided the block and the state. But the block listener only gets executed, executed on a state change. So it doesn't build any UI, it just listens for a state change and then executes some logic according to that state. Why is that necessary when you have a block builder? So let's say you want to display a snack bar. You don't want to display it every time the widget is built. You only want to display it every time a state is changed. Or let's say you want to move to a different screen using a navigator. You, want to, you don't want to go to the different screen every time a widget is built. You want to go every time a state is changed. So things like that. So then the next one is a block consumer. You can see that these two will probably be used together a lot. And that's exactly what the block consumer is for. A block consumer, a block consumer combines a block listener and a block builder into one widget. They're both not too difficult, but they can definitely be very powerful and are very useful when working with blocks. So let's get into the code. Okay, so this is the app we had at the end of the last video. It's just a simple increment and decrement using the block. So let's say we want to add a, not there. Let's say we want to add a print statement here. We'll just use a print statement for for this video, but you can replace it with navigation or anything else you want that would happen on a state change. So state has changed. Let's just use that. You'll see every time we reload it, it says state has changed. If we increment, state has changed. But let's say we just we just reload it. So it still says state has changed, even though there was no state change. And I can prove it to you. If we go to the block and set a breakpoint here, if we increment, the breakpoint will get hit. But if we just reload it, you'll see down here, it's reloading. There's, the breakpoint doesn't get hit. 
but we're still printing this that the state has changed. So that's not that's not a true statement here. Widget has been built as a true statement. We can check it out like that. So in order to get a, a block listener to do something on a state change, we want to wrap this in a widget, and the widget is called block listener. You'll see we're missing some arguments. We're missing a listener argument. And in here, we can print state has changed. Block provider, we did not provide a block to it. So you need to provide the same block. And now it should work. So now, let's say we refresh the app. Widget has been built, pops up. But state changed, does not. What happens if we increment? The counter gets hit, I mean the block gets executed. And we should see that the state has changed, and also the widget has to be rebuilt as well because a state change also triggers a widget rebuild. So that's that's pretty much it. And here you could add to navigate to a different screen. Let's say we do if state.counter is greater than 10. Navigate, navigate, or let's just do a snack bar actually. Scaffold dot of show snack bar, snack bar content over text saying over 10 and the duration of one second. The pop-up doesn't do anything. Increment doesn't do anything. We'll see if we get over 10. We get a we get a state being changed. Now, we, but if you if you refresh it, that won't pop up anymore. Only if you change the state. So. It, these are pretty useful, but you see you'll, you have to provide a block here and you have to prov provide a block there. That's not necessarily the cleanest solution. So we have a thing called a block consumer. That's not where I wanted to do it. I wanted to do it here. So let's introduce a uh, black consumer. Instead of doing it this way, we could just, uh, yeah, we could just pass in the block itself. And here we can implement both of the methods we had before. Let's uncomment that. And this builder as well. And there we should have the same logic happening as before. So if we if we reload it, you'll see at the bottom which it has been built. If we increment state has changed and widget has been built and we saw the scaf the snack bar also pop up so that, that's pretty much it with this video we investigated the block listener and the block consumer which are two very powerful widgets with the block uh, pattern um, there's going to be another video coming up soon how to use multiple blocks so make sure to check that out but other than that this code will be updated on github if you have any questions, make sure to leave in the comments. Make sure to like, subscribe, and share if you enjoyed the video. And thanks for watching.